dwellers of the beautiful city of Sacramento, lovers of the seemingly iridescent California, citizens of our wonderful but less than immaculate country, brothers and sisters, lend me your ears. I beseech you to let every word spoken here today penetrate the deepest recesses of your hearts. I lay down all pretense and come as humbly as I know how. So for every unwelcome thought that feels forced upon you during or after my speech, hold me accountable. For every change thrust upon your way of life, hold me accountable. I will gladly be the martyr for the hundreds of people crying out for peace. My strength to speak derives from those who have given up hope. But as I stand before you, I cannot lie. My heart does quicken. Fear threatens to overtake me, but with every pump of my heart, the rivers of tears shed over a chaotic world are being pumped throughout my body. Tears that have threatened to overrun the world since the dawn of humanity. And these tears have not been given any reason to lessen, so how could I? How could I not live my life trying to fight the proliferation of chaos? How could I not seek to uphold peace? How can I, a brother, a friend, a person who sees hungry mouths gaping open for peace, lining streets, how can I not scream out to the heavens for peace? Peace for the little boys and girls who have been showing whores way past their years. I implore you to look into their eyes Look into the eyes of a hopeless nation. Know that we, every single one of us who speak before you, are a youthful nation seeking to be sustained by peace. Know that we are backed by the Gandhis of the world, true fighters for peace. Those who stand up against those who come against us with nothing but an uplifted chin, against those who would beat cadences into our bodies. Know that we are backed by the John Lennons of the world, dreamers of peace. Those with closed eyes who see nothing but man of every stature, of every color, coming together to work for peace. But for me to get up here and order you to serve, demand your service is the equivalent of a two-year-old demanding a candy bar. What sane adult will listen to the orders of a child? For that is all I am, a child. And if me laying down my pride, if me laying down on this floor and becoming a stepping stone for each and every one of you to get that much closer to peace, that's what I must do. That is what I shall do. That is all that any advocate of peace can ever ask of you. Nobody can force a man to feed a homeless. But even if he did, if his head is full of supercilious notions, he has done nothing to help him at all. He is not listening to the pleas of a chaotic heart. He has done nothing to lessen the loneliness. We have gathered here today seeking the to answer to one of life's greatest questions. How do we generate peace? How do we externalize something too many hope for, but never see accomplished? How do we, humans who unconsciously seek peace like our lungs seem to unconsciously seek air, generate more of our diminishing supply? The answer is simple, and yet so very difficult. We must change the way we think, the way we live, and the way we love, so that we may happily put others before us. Can peace not thrive in a household where mother and father, sister and brother put each other before themselves? There will be no quarrels over stolen items between siblings because brother is putting his sister's feelings before his own. Mother and father put their children before anything they want to do. And brother and sister in turn treat their parents with absolute respect to save their parents' grief. Think of the change I can make in a household. Now imagine that in a community. Neighbor and neighbor coming together to make the area they live in a more beautiful place. Think of the difference I can make in a city. Community and community coming together to stop all the danger, all that scares their children at night. Think of cities coming together to make our state one of the most beautiful places in all of the world. Now think of all 50 states working together to make our nation, and their own for our world, a better place. Although I cannot force you to do anything 
that you're not one to do. Keep in mind that we, each and every person here, need you to try out our propositions of peace. Each and every person on this planet will see the marks left from a society without peace. All that I can ask of you in turn is to ask yourself, what if what this boy proposes and all of its simplicity can change the world? A simple change is all I ask for. And if this simple change can indeed revitalize a dying world, why not try it? Why not save countless crying lonely souls? Why not make myself and the world better? But if this is something you can look into yourself and say, I have done, then you do not need to listen to me. You need to go out and help and do what you have already done. But I cannot tell you whether or not you have done this. I cannot see into your hearts. I cannot see into your minds or your actions. But I ask you, look at yourself and see if peace is really what you're bringing to Sacramento. Thank you.